Welcome to A Message from Heaven, presented by The Church of Christ, which meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee, where John Shannon Sr. is the preacher. Here you can expect a cordial greeting from those who love God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. It is our privilege to invite you to study with us from the Bible, God's holy and divine will made known unto man. And now presenting ministering evangelist, John Shannon Sr. Hello, I'm John Shannon. I preach for the Church of Christ and meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee. Thank you for watching us again this weekly television program, A Message from Heaven. Thank you so very much. We hope that you will take a little time out to get a Bible and a pad and a pen and a piece of paper there and take notes as we give a lesson from God's Word. Thank you so very much. Today, our text will be taken from the book of Mark. Mark chapter 16, verse number 15 and 16. That's Mark chapter 16, verse number 15 and 16. I'm going to give you a little time to turn there, and we'll read this text together, and we'll bring a lesson from these particular verses. In Mark's record, of the gospel. Mark chapter 16 and verse number 15. The record says, and he said unto them, this is Jesus speaking to his apostle. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16 says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now my subject today is believe, be baptized, and be blessed. Let's do that again. Believe, be baptized, and be blessed. Let's look at the text. Point number one in verse 15, we have the broadcasting. Point number two, verse 16b, we have the believing. Point number three, 16b, we have the baptizing. Point number four, we have the blessed, 16C. And point number five, we have the burning, 16D. All right, point number one, the broadcasting. Let's look at the text. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world. In other words, God says, go. We must go. And not only should we go, but we should go global. He said unto all the world. And when we go, go global, we must have something to present. And the only thing that we can present is the good news of the gospel. So we got to go, we got to go global, and we got to go with the gospel, which is the good news. What do you mean gospel? Good news that the Christ is come. The good news that the Christ has fulfilled his mission while he was on this earth. God is the primitive cause of man's salvation, but Christ is the sacrificial cause of man's salvation. Jesus Christ came to this world, did his Father's will. He died on the cross. He shedded his precious blood. And with that blood, he purchased our salvation. Uh, he also 
he purchased the church. And he dedicated the New Testament uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, this good news, Jesus Christ died, he was buried, he was resurrected from the grave. That's good news. Why? Because for the first time, man can have salvation. And it's through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And this is the good news, the message, the good news of the gospel. Men can be saved. And when I say saved, I mean saved from sin. They can have remission of sin. They can be pardoned from all of their sin. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. We are only authorized to preach the gospel. In Romans 1, 16, Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Verse 17 of the same book of Romans, see Romans 1, he says, for therein, therein what? The gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written to just shall live by faith. Now, the only thing that we can preach is the gospel. Why? Because therein is the righteousness of God. Now, what God considered right, he put it in the gospel. Let me slow it down a little bit. We cannot preach anything when it comes to man's salvation that's not in the gospel. Let me pause a moment and do this easy, sweet and easy. You, you don't come up with stuff that men have concocted and preach saying it's gospel, and it's all right. No, we have to preach the gospel and the gospel only. Why? Because it's the power of God on the salvation. Now, if you water down this gospel, it will not have its saving power like God designed it. So we want to make this unmistakably clear that you can only preach what's in the gospel. Now, there's a lot of controversial subjects like uh, the one church. Well, why do you preach about the one church? Because that's the only one that's in the gospel. That's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all these other churches uh, that we preach, uh, that people preach about, that's not in the gospel. They're not preaching the gospel because any church or any religious organization that God didn't think enough to put it in the gospel, you can't preach that. That's your opinion. So we like to preach only what's in the gospel. Is that good? The gospel is God's power to save. God's power to save. Now, then it said go into all the world and preach the gospel. To every creature. Oh, I like that. Every generation. We got to go. We need to go global. We need to go with the good news of the gospel. And we need to go to every generation. And thank God for television, the media. Or we can pre present the gospel in your living room, or in your home, or wherever you are, looking at television. Thank God for the gospel and the message of the gospel. Now, Point number two, he says, verse 16, watch it. He that believeth, believeth what? The gospel. The person that believeth. Now, we have the broadcasting of the gospel. We have to broadcast the pure, unadulterated gospel. But we, just as we are obligated to preach the gospel, Men who hear it are obligated to obey it. Now, Jesus said, he that believeth. What? The gospel. Well, what is the gospel? There's some facts about the gospel. The death of Christ, the burial of Christ, and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. We know that when Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood, he bought our salvation. He paid for the church. You keep bringing up church. You see, Christ and his church, or Christ and his bride, 
are joined together. You can't have one without the other. Sometimes individuals say, well, I just want Jesus. I don't want his church. Well, you can't have it like that. It's a package deal. They're joined together. Christ and his church. Now, believe the gospel, the death of Christ. He died on the cross, shed his blood. He bought the church, according to Acts 20, verse 28. Now, you got to believe that. How many did he buy? He didn't buy but one. Well, which one is it? It's the one that's recorded in the gospel. Isn't that good? Now, you got to believe that, that he died, he was buried. And on the third day, he was resurrected from the grave. You got to believe that Christ was raised for our justification, the Roman letter tells us. Romans 4, 25 or 27, somewhere there in the book of Romans 4. Now, so you got to, you hear it and you believe it. The good news about Christ. You got to know that Christ is our only hope. There is no hope without being in Christ Jesus. All right? You got to believe the facts of the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Facts of the gospel. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Paul said, look at this if you would. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, notice what Paul said. Paul said, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you receive, and wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved. So the gospel got saving power. It has saving power. Now remember this. You can't mix the spiritual stuff with uh, the gospel with secular stuff. You need to let worldly stuff stay where it is and use spiritual stuff, the word of the gospel. Can't add or take away from the gospel. Just let it stay like it is. Preach it just like it's written. When you say, if you keep it remembering what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I have declared unto you first of all that which also I received, how that Christ, look at Christ, died for our sins. See, Christ is a sacrificial offering for man's sin. See, he died for our sins. And according to the scripture, Old Testament scriptures, verify this. And he was buried. He was literally buried in Joseph's new tomb. And it says, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Now look at that. So Christ died. He was buried. He was resurrected from the grave. Now you, that's facts. That's facts that you got to believe. And there are also things that you have to obey. We'll get to that shortly. Now, uh, according to the scripture, well, the gospel says that one must repent. You not only believe the gospel about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, but in this belief, you've got to repent of your sins. Now, what do you mean repent? Repentance means a change of heart brought about by godless sorrow. What do you mean repent? You've got to change your mind about your lifestyle, your sinful activities. You've got to change your mind about that, and you've got to stop. All the moment. Some individuals teach that all you've got to do is believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you don't have to really do any changing. Well, Luke's record of the Great Commission, he said that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So you've got to repent. What do you, Jesus said in Luke 13, 3 and 5, I'll tell you nay, except you repent, you'll perish. What do you mean repent? You've got to change your mind about sin. If you want to be a New Testament Christian, you, there's some changing on your part. You've got to change your mind. Anything that's sinful, you've got to stop. If you're in a religious organization that's not in the gospel, You've got to change your mind about that and come out of it. Why? Because you cannot be saved in any religious order that's not in the gospel. I don't care what it is. So repentance, any sinful activity, you've got to change. 
You've got to change. Somebody said, well, God is just saving me. No, you've got to do something. See, we have God's part when it comes to salvation, and we have man's part when it comes to salvation. Paul said, recorded in the book of Acts, Acts 17, 30, the times of this ignorance, God winked at, watch it, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. You got to change your mind. Any sinful activity, drinking, gambling, denominationalism, illegal drugs, lying, stealing, any of that kind of stuff, you, punication, or dog, you got to change your mind about that. Stop. Get out of that situation. Why? Because God can't save you if you don't repent. Why? Because it's not against, that's, he will not break his will because you don't want to repent. He's not going to save you if you don't repent. And I like what Peter said. Peter said in 1 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, but is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. God wants you to repent. Now, if you don't repent, he won't be saved. So repentance is, but do you believe that? This is part of the gospel. He that believe it, what? The death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You got to repent. You got to believe that. Do you believe you have to repent? Why, certainly. After repentance, you got to confess Christ as the Son of God. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 32, If you don't confess me, paraphrase it, before men, I will not confess you before my Father which is in heaven. And in the Roman letter, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, let's look at that. And a lot of times we quote that. But look at this. Romans 10, 9 and 10, the Bible says, Paul said, But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He says, For what the heart man believeth on the righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, not into salvation, but unto salvation. So confession is important. you got to confess your faith in Jesus Christ. That's pretty good, isn't it? you got to confess. So look what you have to do when you're talking about believing, he that believe it. You believe about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, how that he paid for and bought the one church, and people that saved must be in that one church that's written in the gospel. You got to repent of your sins. We just mentioned that. Then you got to confess Christ as a son of God. That's good, isn't it? That's good. Boy, I like that. So you got to do that. Got to do that. That's believing. Now, God is not going to believe for you. You got to do your own believing. Isn't that real nice? Well, Point number three, the baptizing. Point number one, broadcasting. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Point number two, he that believe. That's the believing. He that believeth, watch it. We just went over the things you must believe. And is baptized, shall be baptized. He that believeth and is baptized. Got to be baptized. Well, a lot of individuals have a problem with baptism. Baptism, they have a problem with it. Well, I don't think you don't really have to be baptized to be saved. Well, you know, a lot of individuals are saying, well, you really saved before water baptism. Water baptism doesn't have anything to do with your salvation. Jesus Christ saves us, and baptism doesn't have anything to do with it at all. So Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You mean to tell me you're going to advocate that a person is saved before he's baptized? That's not what Jesus said. See, you're preaching something that's not in the gospel. Now, there are about 17 different things that the Bible advocates saves us. You have things on God's part, but we're dealing now with things on man's part. Now, 
Preacher, don't you know that the blood of Jesus is what washed our sins away? Precisely. It is the blood of Jesus that washed our sins away. The book of Romans tells us, and also Revelation 1, 5 and 6, that he washed us from our sins in his own blood. But here's the thing. Where is the blood of Jesus? The blood of Jesus is in his body. Well, what's his body? His body is the church. Mm. Since his blood is in him, Ephesians 1, 7, and Colossians 1, 13 and 14, watch this. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. The blood of Jesus, according to Colossians 1, 14, is in him. Well, how in the world do we get into Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus to where you get into him? No. In Galatians 3, listen to me carefully, 26 and 27, the Bible says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 27 says, of Galatians 3, say it. For as many of you that has been baptized, look at it, into Christ. How does one get into Christ? They are baptized into Christ. Well, I begin to see it. Certainly you see it. Because when individuals tell you, you don't have to be baptized, that's telling you that there's another way to get into Christ. No, there's only one way to get into Christ. You hear and believe the gospel. You repent of your sins. You confess with your mouth your faith in Jesus. And you're baptized into Christ. Now when you're baptized into Christ, all spiritual blessings are in Christ. The blood of Christ is a spiritual blessing. Therefore, the blood of Christ is in Christ. Remission of sin is a spiritual blessing. When you are baptized into Christ, you contact the blood, and it's the blood that washes the sins away. But you cannot get into Christ unless you're baptized. Now, what's your conclusion? I want you to think. I want you to be logical. You're baptized into Christ. Therefore, it's necessary to be baptized in order to be saved. And anybody that teaches you that you don't have to be baptized in order to contact the blood of Jesus, they are wrong because baptism puts one into Christ. And when you get into Christ, you receive all the spiritual blessings. And that's so vital. Now, are you saved before baptism or after? There's a lot of individuals that say, well, you're saved the moment you believe. No, that's not true. Why? Jesus said, he that believeth, number one, and is baptized, number two, shall be saved, number three. Preach, Brother Shannon. I know I'm right about that. Look at it. Number one, he that believeth, number one, is baptized, number two, shall be saved, number three. Now, subject is believe, baptized, blessed. That's the seed. Now, some people want to do it like this. Believe, bless, and be baptized later. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, he that believeth, number one, is baptized, number two, shall be saved, number three. Boy, that is so good. Now, your baptism. There, is that all right? There are ten cases of conversion found in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a history book as well as a background book. And it gives us cases of patterns of conversion. And every one of them shows that individual were baptized. Why? Because baptism puts one into Christ. Puts one into Christ. And it's vital that you're baptized into Christ. Don't let anybody tell you that. See, you can hear the gospel and believe it. You can even repent of your sins and confess Christ. You're not saved until you get into Christ. And the only thing that puts you into Christ is baptism. Faith, repentance, confession, baptism into Christ. That's good, isn't it? Now, once you get into Christ, you've got to behave. You've got these blessings. All spiritual blessings are in Christ. Then you've got to behave. What do you mean behave? You've got to act right. 
You've got to behave according to the gospel. You've got to live and walk according to the truth of the gospel. Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 14. Now, so that's the baptizing. Then it says, shall be saved. What do you mean shall be saved? Then you, that's when you receive the blessing. When you are baptized into Christ, you become a child of God. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. You watch it. You have remission of sins. Ephesians 1 and verse number 7. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. You have salvation. 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 10. Paul said, I and do all things for the elect's sake, that they also may obtain the salvation that's in Christ. See the blessing? All, any spiritual blessing that you can think of is in Christ. And baptism is the only thing to put you into Christ after hearing, believing, repenting, confessing. You're baptized into Christ. That's so sweet. All right? You're saved. You're born away, but you're saved. You're born again. You have all the spiritual blessings. Then let's look at the latter part of verse 16. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Well, the first thing somebody's going to say, well, he didn't say nothing about baptism. Wait a minute. He didn't say anything about repentance either. He didn't say anything about confession. Here's the point. If you don't believe the good news of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and if you don't believe that he paid for and bought one church, and if you don't believe, amen, that you've got to repent of your sin, and if you don't believe that you have to watch it, uh, confess Christ with your mouth and own him before this adulterous and sinful generation, if you don't believe that, why talk about baptism? Because if you don't believe, none of that you're not going to be baptized. But watch, the last point is the burning. Individuals that don't obey the gospel, according to the Thessalonian letter, will be lost, will be burned. That's why I have burning. Let me close. It's time to close out here. We'll talk about broadcasting the gospel, believing the gospel, being baptized according to the gospel. Then you have the blessings of the gospel. And then the last point is the burning. Those individuals who fail to obey the gospel will be burned. Will you be burned? You don't have to be after hearing this message. Believe, baptism, blessings. I certainly appreciate you watching this television program. I hope it's been beneficial unto you. Thank you, and God bless you. A message from heaven has been presented by the Church of Christ, which meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee. We're located west of the intersection at James Road in Hollywood. Visit us each Lord's Day where you will receive a cordial greeting. Our schedule of services are Sunday Bible class at 9.15 a.m. and 5 p.m. Sunday worship at 10.30 a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. We also meet on Wednesdays for Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m.